the Passover. You remember that Israel were in Egypt and they were slaves in Egypt and God had said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And he didn't want to. And so there were these ten terrible plagues that came upon them. And still they didn't listen. Still Pharaoh and his people would not let the Israelites go. And so there was to be one last plague. Moses came before Pharaoh and said, About midnight I will go out into Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die, from the firstborn child of Pharaoh upon the throne to the firstborn of the maid girl who works at the mill, and all the firstborn of animals. And there will be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was never heard before and shall never be again. But none of the children of Israel will suffer in any way, neither they nor their animals. And sometimes it says that the even some of the Egyptians put some blood on their doors. That's right. Anyone who wanted to do what God said could be saved from this, just like it is today. Moses went out from Pharaoh in a great anger, but Pharaoh's heart was still hardened, and he would not let the children of Israel go. Moses called for all the elders of Israel and spoke to them. He said, Take a lamb from your flocks and kill it. Take some herbs and dip them in the blood that is in the basin and strike with the blood the top and the two side posts of each door. And you could do it any pattern you wanted, I suppose. Yeah, the important thing was that the blood was there on your doorposts and the blood represented the blood of Jesus. So then, none of you, Moses continued, shall go out of his house until the morning. You shall roast the lamb and eat the meat of the lamb with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. That was to remind them of the bitterness of Egypt. You shall eat it ready to, to leave, with your shoes on your feet and your sticks in your hands. Eat it quickly. It is the Lord's Passover, for the Lord will pass over to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the door top and upon the two side posts of your doors, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the angel of death to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as a covenant with God for you and for your children forever. When you come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he promised, you shall keep this feast. And when your children say, what do you mean by this sacrifice? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, and he saved all our families. When Jesus dies, died, you didn't have to keep the law of Moses. That's right. You which meant you didn't have to celebrate the Passover. That's right, because that blood looked forward to the blood of Jesus. When the people heard it, they bowed their heads and worshipped and went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn child of Pharaoh on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoner in the pit, and all the firstborn of cattle. Pharaoh rose up in the night, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where somebody was not dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Get up and leave you and the children of Israel, and go worship the Lord as you asked, and take your flocks and your herds, and be gone. And the Egyptians urged the people to leave quickly, because they thought, we are all dead men. So the people took their dough before it was raised, and bound the kneading boards up in their clothes, and bundled them on their shoulders. The people of Israel left and journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, not counting the children, and they went with the many other people. You see, some of the Egyptians also wanted to believe in the God of Israel. That night they went out of Egypt.
the children of Israel had been in Egypt for 430 years. The Israelites came to the edge of the wilderness, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to show them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day and by night. And later on you read that horses and chariots followed them through the Red Sea. That's right. It was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled. And then Pharaoh and his servants got angry and thought, why have we done this and let Israel go free? So Pharaoh and his people made ready their chariots, 600 chosen chariots. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Pharaoh chased the children of Israel and came after them and found them camping beside the Red Sea. The children of Israel saw the Egyptians marching after them and were very frightened. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord and said to Moses, Weren't there any graves in Egypt that you brought us here to die in the wilderness? Why did we ever leave Egypt? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die here in the wilderness. Do not be afraid, Moses said to the people. Stand still and watch God's power to save you. The Egyptians whom you've seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. God said to Moses, Why are you crying to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you must lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the Red Sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel will go on dry land through the middle of the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will chase you. Then... I will show my power over Pharaoh and over all his armies, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have revealed my great power. So the angel of God, which went before, in front of, the Israelites, went behind them. The pillar of cloud moved in front of them and went behind them. So it gave light to the Israelites, but the Egyptians could not come near Israel all that night. So Moses stretched out his hand over the Red Sea, and the Lord caused a strong east wind to blow all that night, and the sea went back, and the sea became dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites walked into the middle of the sea on dry ground, with the waters as a wall on their right hand and on their left. And there was fish in the water, and you could see fish in the water. That's right. Maybe the, the fish there might have died or wondered what on earth was happening. And sometimes, or maybe, the children might have stuck their heads in holding their breath and looked at all the fish in the water on the walls beside them. That's right. Maybe there were some starfish on the, on the bottom. Now... The Egyptians chased them and got into the middle of the Red Sea after them. When morning came, the Lord looked on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and troubled the Egyptians. He made the wheels drop off their chariots and get stuck. So that the Egyptians said, let's run away from the children of Israel for the Lord fights for them against us. Then God said to Moses, once all the Israelites had got to the other side of the sea, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may come together again and cover the Egyptians. Moses stretched out his hand and the sea returned. Then the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled from it, but the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh. Not one survived. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the middle of the sea, and the waters had formed a wall for them on the right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel from the hand of the Egyptians, and the Israelites saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And then Moses and the children of Israel sung a song of praise to the Lord, and Miriam the prophetess, Aaron and Moses' sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and danced. Sing every one to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. And if you look on the map, Egypt 
says Egypt and they travelled to Mount Sinai then they went through to to the land of promise to Canaan yeah just as God promised and that is what happens when we get baptized that we go through the water we make our wilderness journey and then we really will come to the kingdom of God.